Hello, so let's have a look at the sample data that we're going to use today when uh, talking about confirmatory factor analysis. The data set that we're using is focusing on work behavior. One of the great challenges for managers and decision makers all over the place is how to ensure high work performance. And one of the particular challenges, as you can imagine, is how can you ensure that people do work or show high work performance, even if the specific behaviors that help uh, an organization to do well are not really part of the official job description. So it's basically all these kind of discretionary additional uh, behaviors that are important for an organization to function smoothly, but at the same time, they are not specified in work contracts. And that is one of the challenges that a lot of organizations have been faced with. So for actually quite a few years, researchers have started to look at these dimensions and try to develop questionnaires that capture these additional work behaviors in order to see you know, like, um, how well an organization is doing. So what we're going to look at is one set of questions that were used in quite a big study and are, are used quite widely in research actually. Typically, you would see something like this in a climate survey and people will be asked, please indicate the extent to which you agree with the following, and following statements about your work behavior. And then it's typically strongly disagree to strongly agree. And now, if we start reading those items, I volunteer to do things for this work group. I help orient new employees in this group. I attend functions that help this work group, et cetera, et cetera. And also further down, uh, if we look at the last item, for example, I speak up in my group with ideas for projects or changes in procedures. I keep well informed about issues where my opinion might be useful to my group, et cetera, et cetera. If you start looking at these items, you might get a feel for the dimensions that these items are measuring. So I'll just give you a few seconds to quickly look through them and try and think what kind of dimension could these items be tapping into. Right. If we go forward, I'm just going to show you the title page of the original article that described the development of this instrument. It was published in 1998, so quite a few years ago in the Academy of Management Journal, one of the premier uh, management journals. And as the title says, it measures two different types of these extra behaviors. One is helping going out of your way to help other people with their workloads. And the other one is voice. Voice here means to make suggestions, to be creative, to help with any kind of uh, tasks that, you know, like make work go more smoothly. So if we just go quickly back, as you can see, the first set of items here up to, I think this one here, yeah. Um, Oh, sorry, this one here, I help others in this, in this group with their work responsibility. All of these items here capture the helping component and all the items down here capture the voice component where we measure basically whether people make recommendations, they speak up um, and they make suggestions for improving work. Where does this data that we are going to use come from? It comes from a big project that I was involved with where we collected data in a large number of companies around the world. And I'm going to use for the exercise, we're going to use some data from New Zealand, from the Philippines, from Brazil, and from Canada. So now your job is, first of all, if you flick back to the items, I will put up the survey as well. Try and write out the equation for this two-factor model. How would you actually write it out 
uh, so that R would know which of the items are defining or defined by what kind of factor. That's your first job right 